Hi, my name is Brian Norton with the InData project at Easter Seals Crossroads. Today we're going to take a look at switch access on the iPad. Tracy Castillo um, is going to take some time and kind of show us how to connect a Bluetooth switch and, and how that works. Hello, my name is Tracy Castillo. I work with Easter Seals Crossroads. At the InData project here, we are taking on disabilities together. This is my tech tip for you. Today, I will be connecting a Bluetooth switch to an iPad that is running iOS 10. Feel free to use this video as a tutorial. Press pause, fast forward, or rewind as you like so that you can follow along with me on how to use switch access on an Apple device. Uh, first things first, let's, let's introduce you to the switch. The switch that we are using today is by AbleNet. Now, I borrowed this switch from our loan library that um, Justin runs. So we have a loan library where we have lots of different types of assistive technology that is waiting for you that you can actually try out for 30 days to see if you like it. And if you like it, you can try to buy it. Um, we also have different types of funding available for individuals. But you can find out all that information on our website at EasterSillsTech.com. So here is our switch. It's like I said, it's from AbleNet. <clears throat> now this single, this switch provides either single poof, or dual access um, via a Bluetooth connection to an iOS, Apple S OS X, Windows, Windows, um, Windows, Google Chrome, and Android devices. Wow they did cover all their bases with this one. This switch also includes an integrated battery which is, can be charged by um, looks like that's a micro USB port. There are also a few external ports that you can attach more devices to. <clears throat> now what you'll also see is on this side there are different modes that you can set for this device. So here it is. That is our switch. Like I said, it's from AbleNet. Um, retails at $185. So that's why our loan library is so great. So you can actually borrow this switch from our loan library, try it out if you like it, then you can buy it. <clears throat> now, um, there are new switches access um, in iOS 10. There's additional recipe actions. So you're asking me, what is a recipe? Well, a recipe are macro functions that enable the user to repeat a single function over and over by activating one switch, like turning a page in the book. In iOS 10, there are, is a new recipe for the action um, hold and point. So that's what we need to know new about the iOS 10 versus the iOS 7 when they first came out with the switch access one of the new functions. Anyhow, let's talk about some other ones as we go along. We're going to start right now by turning on our Bluetooth settings. So in the Bluetooth settings, not Wi-Fi, but Bluetooth settings, we're going to go ahead and turn it on. And I can see that right there is my Bluetooth. That is the name of this switch is asking for it to be turned on. So, let me turn it back off. It was on. Let me turn it back on. See if that helps. <clears throat> so now it is connected. So that makes it a lot of easier. Now we are going to start activating the switches on this device and getting it set up to this Apple device. We're going to go first, you know, let's, before we add the device, let's go ahead and make life easier on ourselves. Let's set up a shortcut, an accessibility shortcut. Now, Apple offers different shortcuts in their, um, their operating system. So we're going to go to general, oh, and then we're going to go to accessibility. We're going to scroll down to the very bottom of the accessibility, and there's an accessibility shortcut. So here is the menu. There are different types of accessibility functions that are in this iPad and in their operating system. It's so nice. We have voiceover, we have inverted colors, grayscale, zoom, switch control, and assistive tech. Today we're going to use this switch control. So we're just going to type switch control 
And now what that does, it allows me to touch on the home button three times and I can get to switch control. Um, I thought that was really neat and I thought we could show you how to just set that up. Step 442 on setting up a switch. No. Step three is going to be configuring our switch with this iPad. So let's go back to our general uh, menu. We're going to find accessibility. And under accessibility, we're going to scroll down until we find the interaction menu. Under interaction, we have switch control. And let us find where it says switches. There it is. Okay. We're going to add a new switch. And now we're going to add an external switch. Now what does this mean? Now I've seen this before and before I knew exactly what it was, I got a little confused. I was I was really confused. I didn't know what was going on. What is asking you to do right now is to touch your switch to activate your switch. We activate this switch by pushing the button. Wow. I don't know if you can hear this, but when I touch that switch, I can hear something clicking inside the device. It gives you a little tactile uh, feedback. So now we're going to name it. Um, let's just go simple and name this the white switch. So there it is, the white switch. And what are we going to, what is the function of this switch? This switch we're going to use to we're going to set up a type of scanning so we can do our self-scanning, uh, manual scanning. Let's um, let's tell it to move to the next item. So we're going to use our white switch to move to the next item. Now we do have another switch to add. We have our orange switch. So we're going to add a new orange switch. So we say now it's an external switch. So it's not part of the iPad. I'll go into the other switches in just a moment, but we're going to add an external switch. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to touch our orange switch. And we're going to name it, quite simple, orange. And we're going to tell it, tell this machine that the, when that orange switch is activated, that it is going to be the selector. It is going to select my next item. Now, as promised, I'm going to show you the other two switches that you can add. When there is a screen, you can use this screen, your iPad screen, as a switch itself. So we use the full screen. So if I touch anywhere on the t on the screen of this iPad, I can give it a function. We're not really going to set that up at this time, so we're just going to back out, and then we can see that there's another type of switch called the camera. So what the camera does, it looks at your face, you can see your face, and it will tell if you're going to make a left head movement or a right head movement. And that would be used for someone who has extreme, extremely limited mobility, someone who cannot move their hands very well. So we're just going to use the two switches that we've set up now. So there they are, they are set up. And we're going to back out of here. So at this time, I think it's safe to say it's okay to turn on switch control. So we can see this work. I'm going to turn on switch control now. It is, at this time, it is scanning. I thought we were going through a different one. But as you can see, we're just going to roll with this. Did you notice how I had those crosshairs going across the screen? I can get to that menu right here. See where it's highlighted? Let me go back to this. I'm going to select this row and I have refine selection. That's where I got my crosshairs. Item mode. Let's go back to item mode. So on item mode, you can see when I hit the, the white button, I can just go to the next one manually. I have to push the button and it goes to the next one. Push the button it goes to the next uh, menu. So that is how you would use the manual one.
or the item selector. There was another menu that was called the point point, the refine one. It's and and that gives me these crosshairs that run across the screen and I can activate the switch to stop it. There's a few more switch um, uh, steps involved in that, but I can cover, it seems I can cover a large amount of screen at, um, at a quicker rate. But that is not how we want to do it at this time. Let me go ahead, select it, item, select. Okay, so as you can see, I am scrolling around my screen by hitting the white button, which is my move forward or move to the next button. It's very nice. Now, let us say, but Tracy, I don't want to be in the menu the whole time. How do I get somewhere else? Well, you can back out. But as you can see, this is going to take a long time. Let's say I want to go to my apps. So when I want to go to my apps, I just select. Oh gosh, don't select that. When I want to go to the home menu, I want to go to the next one. Yep, I hit the airplane mode. Don't hit the airplane mode, it turns off your Wi-Fi. Okay, Apple, I think you're going to have to do something about that one. Look at this. I just found a glitch in the system. Apple, you made it too easy for me to hit the airplane mode with my switch. That may cause a problem for somebody in the future when they are trying to use this. Well, hold on. Let's um, let's go somewhere else safe. Let me come over here. Hold on. I know I can do this. Let's select. <laughs> we'll select down in this box. So I'm gonna hit that box. I hit here now. I'm inside this um, other menu. I hit this one. I believe it's that one. No, it wasn't. So I'm not that proficient on here, as you can tell. But that's okay. I just want to make sure that you know, as that you can get there. Let me see. Oh, there's what I'm looking for, home. That's where, I, say I want to go to my home. There it is, nice. That's so cool. See, I can go to all the different app, um, apps on my tablet. Now, this is a, a very, very, very good thing for people that have limited mobility that are are unable to tap on the screen to select the one they want. So I would suggest taking this and running with it. Um I did I did like highlight one of the things that are it's wrong with it. It's easy too easy to get into airplay mode. I'm thinking if I can get in airplay mode and turn on airplay mode, it's probably gonna be really easy for me to turn off the switch. Maybe if Apple got to something where you can actually lock yourself or so lock it out so you can't get to those settings very easily, maybe just hiding that settings icon, maybe it will work out um, well. Anyhow, um, back in the settings, we did see that they have different types of recipes. Let's go back to them. I'm going to use my hand. We're going to go to recipes. I'm going to switch control. Let me go ahead and turn this off for a moment. 
Now, the recipes are like macros that you can set up for your um, to do different things. Um, recipes are great for repetitive texts like returning a page in an ebook or controlling a game. A recipe can be a set to automatically turn off after a predetermined amount of time or when a second switch is activated. So that is really nice. Um, we have the scanning styles. We have auto scanning on here. Now this is going to, instead of using like the white switch to go to the next one, we are just going to let it scan automatically and then maybe you would activate the orange switch to stop it or to select. Um, single step, um, so let's say I only have one switch, um, I can set up single, uh, it's hard for me to say, single switch step scanning. Oh my goodness, thank you Apple for doing that to me. Um, loops, oh look at this there's also timing you can adjust the time the scanning timing time so um, right now it's set up a second you can actually add or subtract some time from that that's it when you have it on scanning time or you have it on switch um, auto switching or auto scanning and this is how fast it goes to the next item depending on how um, how you react to that is how you're going to adjust it, how fast you can select that button before it goes to the next one. Or if you're really proficient and you just want it to move really fast because you can um, stop it on, on the right one. Um, so the next one we're going to talk about on here is loops. So when auto scanning is on, the scan will go through all the items on the scan and then start over. The number of loops is how many times the scan will go through all the items and then start over. After the number of loops has been completed, the scan will stop. And if once you, to get it started again, you're going to have to activate the switch. Now, there's also another one called long press. If you added a second long press action to your switch, this is how you set the number of seconds a switch must be triggered for it to be considered a long switch or long press action. Now we also have tap behavior and on tap behavior it determines what happens when a user selects an item when um, when scanning. Now we go here, a uh, whole duration, I think that's kind of self-explanatory and sound effects. You can add sound effects to this now. Oh my goodness. Does it do anything? No, I didn't hear anything. So you can change the size of the cursor, the cursor color, which is that focus bar. You can change it. Right now it's blue. You can set it up to be red, yellow, green, or orange. So you can customize the switch axis on here in so many ways. And then you can also add different types of gestures to this. This is a really great thing for people with limited mobility. I mean, Apple has done a number one on giving you easy access to how uh, to to customizing your switch to make it work for you. So I I don't know. I suggest getting on Easter Seals Tech right now. And if you want to try the switch, signing up for our loan library and giving it a try. Now, not only can you get that switch from the loan library, I hope you did hear me say you can get this Apple too, this um, iPad, so you could try that out as well. All right, well, my name is Tracy Castillo. I really appreciated you listening to this video. And if there's anything else that you would like me to do a video on, please let me know. Give me some ideas. Okay, thanks. Have a great one. So what a great way to get access to the iPad when you have difficulty using the touchscreen. That's your tech tip for this week. My name is Brian Norton with the InData Project at Easter Seals Crossroads in Indiana.